The broad interests of the U.S. extend beyond its own borders, and one of the most important fronts where it needs to be the strongest and fearsome is insecurity. Like the British Royal Navy more than a century before it, the U.S. Navy has a command of the sea that affords the United States unrivaled international influence. But the purpose of these aircraft carriers extends beyond security, because the real reason that they seem to be everywhere will surprise you. And warfare, firepower reigns supreme. And when it comes to delivering that firepower, nothing compares to an aircraft carrier. Think of the Gerald R. Ford and Nimitz-class carriers as the apex predators of the battlefront. These giants can unleash up to 125 strike sorties per day during peak operations, each capable of engaging multiple high-value targets. No other platform, whether it's air-based, land-based, or even another sea vessel, comes remotely close to the raw firepower these behemoths bring to the table. But here's where it gets even more jaw-dropping. These carriers are practically self-sufficient war machines. With their at-sea reload capabilities and massive storage of munitions, they can keep the pressure on for extended periods without needing to return to base. Whether it's launching devastating airstrikes, securing air superiority, or hunting down submarines, the aircraft carrier is a relentless force that can change the tides of battle in an instant. What makes them even more terrifying? They're mobile. Aircraft carriers aren't stuck in one spot like air bases, making them an incredibly tough target to hit. They can slip into international waters, ready to strike without any permission from a host nation. Moving across the world's oceans, these floating fortresses are nearly untouchable, striking fear into any adversary while remaining just out of reach. To understand the true power of an aircraft carrier, you need to see it for what it really is. 100,000 tons of raw power and pure naval supremacy. This isn't just a floating airfield, it's an evolving weapon. A juggernaut of modern military strategy that's been adapting since its creation in the early 20th century. And now, as China's vast A2AD or Anti-Access Area of Denial Defensive Network rises, these carriers are forced to sharpen their edge even further. But let's be real, China's network sounds like a knockoff robot from Star Wars, doesn't it? These colossal vessels have taken on six pivotal roles over time, each one crafted from the ever-changing landscape of warfare. First up, the role of being the eyes of the fleet. In their earliest days, and especially during World War II, carriers lurked behind battle lines, launching aircraft to scout out enemy positions. They were the unseen watchers in the night, gathering intelligence that would determine the fate of entire fleets. Then came the role of cavalry. Much like the fast-moving cavalry of the 19th century, these carriers would strike swiftly, disrupt enemy operations, and then vanish before they could be caught. Hit, run, and disappear. Their mobility became their greatest weapon, an ability to stay hidden until it was too late for the enemy. Next, they evolved into the capital ship. In this role, carriers became the centerpiece of naval warfare, engaging in calculated, decisive battles. But here's the catch. They fought only when they knew the risk of destruction was outweighed by the damage they could inflict. They were tactical, they were calculating, and they were lethal. As the Cold War raged, carriers transformed again, this time into nuclear strike platforms. With Washington worried that B-36 bombers might not be up to the task, carriers were outfitted to deliver nuclear payloads deep into enemy territory. The stakes were raised and the world learned that these carriers were no longer just conventional tools, they had the power to obliterate nations. But it's not just about firepower. Enter the geopolitical chess piece role. For decades, U.S. presidents have sent these carriers as symbols of American strength. Moving them into position was like playing a high-stakes game of chess, each deployment signaling American resolve. When the USS Gerald R. Ford recently sailed into the eastern Mediterranean, it wasn't just about preparing for battle. It was a message to the world. The U.S. is watching, and it's ready to act. Finally, the role that's perhaps the most well-known, airfield at sea. Since the Cold War, carriers have launched aircraft to support operations ashore, acting as mobile air bases. 
But now, as sea-controlled threats like China's naval forces increase, this role becomes more dangerous. Operating in contested waters will push these carriers into a new phase of risk, where mobility could be the difference between domination and destruction. When it comes to global crises, aircraft carriers aren't just symbols of military might. They're lifelines in times of catastrophe. While amphibious ready groups often get the first call for disaster relief, carriers possess something invaluable – speed and raw capacity. These floating giants are game changers in humanitarian assistance and disaster response. Now imagine a carrier's fleet of aircraft sweeping across disaster zones, conducting search and rescue missions, delivering life-saving medical care, and ferrying supplies to those stranded. That's what happened in 2004 when a massive earthquake and tsunami tore through Indonesia and the Indian Ocean. The USS Abraham Lincoln Carrier Strike Group was the first on the scene, providing relief in one of the largest humanitarian efforts the Navy has ever undertaken. And then, in 2011, disaster struck Japan. After the earthquake and subsequent tsunami wreaked havoc on the Fukushima nuclear plant, the USS Ronald Reagan served as a floating base, helping deliver critical supplies and fueling rescue helicopters for weeks. These are just a few examples of the unmatched versatility aircraft carriers bring to the table. Now let's switch gears. In a world that's becoming increasingly chaotic and unpredictable, the US Navy's readiness is more critical than ever. This year's Hook Symposium theme, Be Ready, couldn't be more on point. We're no longer living in the peaceful post-Cold War era that some predicted. Instead, we face a landscape where nations like China, Russia, Iran, North Korea, and violent extremists pose constant threats. This is a world that looks a lot more like Samuel Huntington's Clash of Civilizations not the utopia that Francis Fukuyama imagined in the end of history. Decades ago, in 1954, Huntington warned that the Navy's mission wasn't just about controlling the seas anymore. It was about projecting power on land, particularly along the critical littorals of the Eurasian continent. His words still resonate today. More than 70 years later, naval aviation and aircraft carriers are more indispensable than ever before. The reason is simple. U.S. adversaries fear them. And because of that fear, they're working overtime to target and neutralize our carriers, but if they think we're going to quit or slow down, well, they're in for a rude awakening, because America never quits. After all, we're not the French. The challenges are clear. To keep up with an ever-evolving world, we've got to build an impenetrable counter-targeting capability. We need to dazzle, deceive, and destroy any enemy who dares to locate or threaten our carriers. The carrier's main battery, the air wing and its deadly payload, needs to be faster, smarter, and deadlier with increased range and precision that'll leave adversaries scrambling. And let's not forget about the future. Unmanned systems, directed energy weapons, and even battlefield 3D printing are already on the horizon. The inherent space and power of a CVN make it the perfect platform for the military tech of tomorrow. The U.S. has the talent, the drive, and the sheer willpower to meet these challenges head on. And the race against time, every second counts. Speed Angels, the fight's on.